Hi, I'm Shane from Dronology, and today we're going to be looking at DIY building block drones. Why? Because I think there's a number of really great advantages with these, particularly if you're learning to fly a drone. Experimenting with design is one of the big ones. You can move the pieces around and get different results. These little drones, these build it drones, are generally repairable. You can get those replaceable components that snap on or snap off. They're small, under 100 grams. So let's get on the way and I'll show you the drone we're going to be working with today. Now in this build I'm using a kit called the Hellaway. However, as you know there's countless different manufacturers out there but essentially they uh, assemble in the sim similar ways and abide by the laws of physics all the same. So let's start by unboxing it and having a look what's inside. No surprises there. However, I will start by saying that one thing that all drones have in common are their batteries. And when you're unpacking them, this is the perfect time to check that they're in perfect working order. And by that, they're not fluffy or bulging out. And if you ever see a battery like that, that's the time to get rid of it and replace it with another, making sure they've got the same voltage and milliamps. This battery charges through a standard USB adapter. So let's get that going first of all. Now I've laid all the parts out, just making sure that everything that they said was in the box <laughs> is in the box. Now one thing I'm noticing is the different wire colours to the motors as well as the propellers. Now that's going to be important, we'll look at that shortly. But also here we've got the flight controller. This little box here, it's like the brain for the whole drone. It's also receiving information from the remote transmitter so you can tell it what to do. Let's get those instructions out and just check through them again. We'll start off by having a look what was included in the box. We've got some basic chassis assembly, followed by the flight controller, and then securing to the fuselage and installing the protective frame. But it's step three that's the most important. It's the output of the electronic speed controllers to the motors. Now if you get this wrong, information from the flight controller is gonna to go to the wrong motor. It's gonna create flight issues. So if you have problems flying, this could be a great place to start troubleshooting. Look, let's have a look in a little bit more detail. In any quadcopter design, the motors are always going to be arranged diagonally like this. And that's to combat what we call torque. If you've ever turned on a motor without it being properly fixed down, you know exactly what I mean. And in this example, we can see that the front left and the rear right are wired to spin clockwise. The front right and the rear left are wired to spin anti-clockwise. That way, they cancel each other's torque out. So if all motors were spinning in one direction, let's say clockwise, the torque would force the drone to spin anti-clockwise on its central axis. With two motors spinning one way and two the other, that cancels that problem out. Let's move on. With that information, it's time to assemble the drone. We've got all the pieces, so we're going to start by building the arms onto the main chassis there, making sure that those motors are to the right arm. When we're putting them together, we want to make sure that the pieces are pushed together tightly so they're not going to come away during flight and cause a drone failure. There we are, we've got the frame all together, those wires are out the way. We'll put these feet on next. Now making sure that they're balanced nicely along the frame, if you put two of them towards the outside and the other two towards the end, it's going to be unbalanced and that's going to affect flight as well. All together, it's looking pretty good. It might be time to add the flight controller. Now you can see the electronic speed controller outputs there. We've talked about them. But look, this isn't a very complex flight controller at all. There's no GPS or compass or any ultrasonic sensors to uh, keep the drone in its 3D space. So it will drift with the wind or it, if it flies off, there is no return to home fail safe. When we're putting the battery in, we want to make sure that that sits in there without being crimped or damaged either. Let's make sure that those propellers are all spinning freely and are not going to get caught up with any of the wires. Time to put that uh, protective frame on to mitigate any damage to the propellers. While they're pretty tough, those nicks over time will impact on flight performance. But we're going to need to start powering up now. We've got our main battery charged, but our controller will need some power as well. 
Some controllers may have a USB charge as well, but this one relies on some AA batteries and it takes three. So we pop those in and the cover back on. Before we go any further, it's time to talk about safety. They're small propellers, but gee, they can do damage if they wanted to. They don't cost much, but they could save a lot in doctor's bills. Put them on. I think we're pretty much ready to go. The Hellaway, it asks you to power on the drone first, so we're going to do that. And it has some little lights at the front, which indicate that, woohoo, we are alive and ready to go. We now turn the controller on. And let's watch what the drone does. Yes, hello, we've found you. Time to go. We're now ready to learn how to control this drone using mode two, the most popular one. That means the throttle's on the left. Push up, all the motors spin quicker, and the drone goes up in altitude. Pull down, the opposite happens. The left stick on the controller is also responsible for your and this is where we use motor torque to our advantage. So if we push the stick to the left, the A propellers spin faster with the torque making the drone your left or anti-clockwise. Push the left stick to the right and the opposite happens. The B propellers speed up and the torque makes the drone your to the right or in a clockwise direction. Let's look at the right stick on the controller now. That controls a couple of things as well. First of all, pitch. Push that forward, the rear two propellers speed up, the drone tilts forward and moves forward. Pull back and the opposite happens, the front ones speed up and the drone moves backwards. Pushing the stick to the left or the right will cause the craft to what we call roll. Push left, the B and A propellers on the right hand side speed up and the drone heads left. If you go to the right, the A and B propellers on the left hand side speed up and it heads to the right. We're now looking at what's called trim, making those fine adjustments to make sure the propellers all spin at the same speed. So you don't get any unexpected roll, pitch or yaw. You can see here in this example, there's obviously some major issues. The drone just wants to roll over. It doesn't even want to go up. That would suggest that we've plugged in the wrong motor to the wrong electronic speed controller. Adjusting the trim on the Hellaway controller is as simple as pressing the corresponding button to the stick control or direction. It's a bit of trial and error. So here we go, oh, it's heading back. So we'll push the button up a bit. Oh, she's spinning. All right, that's the your one we need to press. After a while, you'll see it will get much more stable. One more adjustment. Oh no, not quite. Let's try that again. Perfect. So with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to trim your craft so it's ready to fly. And I think that's where we're up to with the Hellaway now. Let's get flying. So that's the Hellaway drone. Um, not a bad little product. Nice cheap way at the moment to get these into your, into your schools and have a play around. We'll look at some of the modifications on the Hellaway next time and maybe some fixes and some um, problem solving issues that you might have with these units. Catch you later.